the Penn State Band plays on behind us. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. Penn State 31, the Church 14. I'm Wayne Viner, alongside Mason Viner, who saw Georgia Florida last week, Penn State Maryland today. And Mason, for a game that Maryland could have won, the Rose 31 14. I, I don't know what to say. Yeah, it's. It's different tonight. A lot of missed opportunities in this game for Maryland, and it kind of tells a different story of this season. You know, this is, to me, shows progression. Penn State's not the best team by any stretch that Maryland's played, but they're a team that has a really strong defense and showed tonight, and a lot of the things that we talked about on the podcast and on the radio kind of showed through. Penn State just made one more play. The Terps twice inside the 20-yard line, one of them a pick six, one fumble, and you'll get the scoreboard, and there's your difference. Maryland gets no turnovers from Penn State, but gives up a couple. But the, the pick six, not a great play, but you had to try and win the game, so you got to throw the ball. Boy, Maryland stalls out inside Penn State territory around the 35, once it was in the 38, stalled out several times, doesn't go for it. I don't particularly care if it's fourth and twelve or fourth and five, but you can't keep showing at the thirty-eight punting. I don't know if Joseph Petrino was hurt. And I'm very excited they went with a kick today, a field goal kick, and uh, you got to go for it. You can't punt at the thirty-five three times. Yeah, and I would say the injury is mounting for this Maryland team. Uh, we're seeing kind of what happened in 2019. Guys got hurt. Loxley kind of evaluated his field goal block team and says, look, we can't block for it. We're going to get blocked. The kick's going to get blocked. We're not liking what we're seeing there. So they kind of threw that out of the playbook. And I think for this team, they played the game well enough to win, and, and this is a learning experience. And so that's what Coach is going to say. As we had to break, the defense played well enough to win today. Offense had too many drops. Didn't have many penalties till near the end. A couple times, it was 71, Duncan moved early. Could have, we're, we're losing the game, 31-14, and we had the better team won. But, man, things a lot closer to that score indicates. Um, we'll be back in a moment from Maryland Stadium to talk about Jahan Dotson lighting up the turn secondary. And here's a new ad featuring... So enjoy that. We'll be back in a second. Network solutions, managed IT, and technical support. Viner Forgates makes your company work. Solutions to protect your business from WatchGuard, including firewalls and endpoint protection. Protect your company and make your company work with solutions from Viner Forgates. Dodson ran rough shot over the Terps. It's 10 catches, 237. Wow. Yeah, and this is something that I called out on the podcast this week that I kind of expected. The Terps just don't have that defensive back play this year. Uh, it's been a struggle from both Tariq Steel, who made some really good plays in this game, and Jaborian Bennett, who came up uh, with a couple. But when Maryland was running their zone uh, defense, you know, that cover two blitz, which is a Brian Stewart uh, mainstay in his team that they really haven't used much this year, John Dodson. Uh, lined up in the slot, found the middle of the field, and, and you know, he's one of those players you're just not going to catch. That's why he's going to be a first-round draft pick in the NFL. And really, Penn State had one guy on offense. Parker Washington, the guy that I thought would do the most damage to Maryland, uh, really didn't do much. Uh, one big catch in this game, but Jahan Dobson single-handedly uh, really beat the Terps' defense. And, you know, credit to Penn State for knowing that they have a player like that and using him a lot like Maryland used to have in there and started to go to rock Jarrett a little more just wasn't enough chig as 12 catches maybe the one for the two-point conversion doesn't count as a stat which would have given him 13 but chig was pretty good after a couple of drops what do you think of those marcus fleming and chig drops earlier in the game yeah that's the kind of thing that's going to cost you this game and, and if you go back and you look at the film you can see it was in huge moments for maryland where they really needed to get something going and they had those opportunities especially the late fleming drop you know you can kind of throw uh, a lot of them out just say that's going to happen in a given football game but you know, you look at it, four or five drops, that number's got to be closer to two. 
uh, Penn State drops a couple passes like they did, they're going to go back and look at it and say the same thing. You know, those are plays, back shoulder routes on the Penn State ones, but for Maryland, they're straight on plays over the middle. That's what this team's looking to do. Those are the passes that they complete, and that's how they win football games. Uh, a thing that I got to point out is I'm a lot more confident going forward in this Maryland team. Their ability to compete when a team like Michigan or Michigan State is on the other side of the line after this game. If you look at you know what's coming up, you can take this and build off of it. But it's another time where if you look back in the past, Maryland seems that they'll come out very defeated next week uh, after this game. And that's one thing you got to factor in uh, with the Terps heading up to East Lansing next week. Well, defeated. I mean, Purdue takes it to Michigan State. So Michigan State's bubble is burst. Uh, Leah, play well enough for you? No. Um, you know, that one at the end is just not a ball you can throw. He just lets it go over across the middle. You know, that that's what every defense is keyed in on on him. And now I think overall it was a better game. Um, put it together, he made some of those throws that he hasn't made yet this year. He looked more like week one Leah at times, but Maryland got down towards the red zone. And, you know, as I already mentioned, that fumble, which is kind of a play, your center, Look, your true center, I, Eric Harris isn't in there, Spencer right. Anderson snapping the ball. And, you know, just there's a handful of plays that you point out in this game. Maryland did not commit terrible penalties, no pass interference calls in this game, no unsportsmanlike conducts for Maryland in this game. You look at the, down the list of things you need to do to win, you almost check all those boxes, oh, except they just, score. they just didn't complete the drives. They just didn't, didn't complete score. the plays. And this is something that's going to happen. You know, if you go back to 2019, you look at where this team was at, you look at where they're at now, there's clear progress. There is uh, progress there. I will have to tell you, it was a moment of absolute joy when Maryland ties the game. Uh, I thought maybe, maybe tonight is the night but we'll have to put this off for a little bit. Maryland's still stuck on five wins. The greatest hope I would still think is at Rutgers. You have Michigan State there, Michigan here, and then you're up to New Jersey. you got to win one game. I do feel better about the team. This was a really frustrating night. Congrats to Penn State for putting together a pretty good passing game for Clifford, who still looked a little hurt, but he throws for 363 yards. Leah throws for 311. It just wasn't enough. Mason, thanks for dropping in. Um, any closing words? Yeah, you got to get back on the grindstone, back at it next week. It doesn't get any easier for this team. They got to stop the run next week and come out um, and just play the kind of football they want to, which I feel like they were really close to tonight. Pretty close, but that doesn't get it done. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Mason Viner for Bruce Posner's back in the studio. Uh, you can catch us on Turp Talk on 1300 The Bet on Wednesday, the Sports Maven at 9 a.m. on 1300 on Saturday mornings. And, of course, you can watch the Young Turps podcast and these post-game shows. We'll keep posting them as Osborne keeps playing the games. We'll talk to you soon, and we'll see you on the radio.